then after that, or this, so I'm working at Costco at the time. I'm uh, like cashiering, pushing carts in this area, and then mm -hmm. kind of moving up, right? So I become kind of the technical go-to guy, doing phone systems and mm -hmm. things like that within the warehouse, the point of sale, because I can figure out how to suddenly strip a uh, strip apart the coax cable so you can put a BNC connector on it, all that kind of cool stuff. It's things I like. So I had the technology and that interest. I end up fast forward another five years on top of that. Then I get my master's. So it took me 11 years out of high school to where I finally end up with a master's in physics. Now, why did I go physics? I was going to get my MBA, but I would have had to take more classes because down here, I didn't have kind of the, the basic business one. So I would have had like double the, the credits that I needed. So I said, I don't forget that. I'm just going to go physics. I know that. <laughs> um, <laughs> this wasn't easy, but, um, you know, in hindsight, well, hindsight's always 20-20, right? <laughs> if I'd have known I was going to be where I'm at today, which, by the way, I feel like I'm in a really great spot. I didn't plan to be uh, leading our payment card industry data security standard practice from the Seattle office working with you know, great people like Tom. I didn't plan that, I didn't calculate that. I, would have, I had no way of foreseeing that in the future, especially way down here, right? I, I, don't, I had no idea. So where this ends up, leading to is I'm working um, in my very background I worked in accounting I was an accounting trainer when they started the department at Costco that's what got my wife and I and our family up here 16 years ago they started a new department I traveled around the country and taught inventory auditors warehouse managers how to use the accounting system to help control trends. I wasn't in IT then still wasn't there I have this passion for the science and all of that, but no real outlet for it, um, other than watching you know cool TV shows or or you know still getting a, you know Scientific American things like that, right? Okay. Uh, what's that? Okay. <laughs> the guy. Oh, I love that show, right? <laughs> <laughs> what's that? Did you get into accounting and inventory for that? That's a great question. So at the time there was. Costco merged with another company called Price Club that was started in San Diego. The founder of that whole retail industry, Saul Price, started the Price Company. There are folks from that company is what started Costco. So Costco was a mirror of the business model and in technology as well, because uh, like, IT people came as well, right? So there was there was a lot of similarities there, and so Jim Senegal, who just retired from being the, the, uh, the CEO, he actually started with Saul back in the 50s, I believe, a company called Fedmark. So there's a lot of history there, a lot of the leadership, they all worked together for the last 40 plus years. So that, that merging of those two companies was actually a fantastic um, situation for both companies. So how did I get in uh, to there? So when they the guy that started the department in the accounting department, what he remembered me from doing presentations, from the time of the merge, the accounting systems, the buying systems, they were, they were different, right? So now they want to kind of merge it all together, which is not an easy task. Um, I was an inventory auditor at the time, which I loved that job, and he remembered me from being in some of the seminars because I would raise my hand and ask a question. It's like every presentation I go to, for some reason, I find a way to ask a question because I'm curious, right? I Like you guys are doing, you're interacting, you're obviously paying attention, you're listening, and, and I like to do that because I'm always trying to think, okay, what can this speaker do for me? What is this speaker going to say that will help me in my career? that will help me where I'm at, give me some kind of nugget. So I'm always listening for something that they're gonna provide to help me. So, but he remembered me from that. And it just so happened that we were interested in relocating, I wanted to move up in the company. And in order to do that, 
you have to, if you're in retail and you want to be a store manager or something of that nature, you're most likely going to have to relocate a number of times. Because you don't typically be a store manager for 20 years at the same store. They typically move you around. He remembers me. We come up here. I'm doing the accounting training thing. I'm traveling around the country. And then some opportunities open up. Costco decides, hey, look, we can't get enough RPG programmers. And that's a language on the AS400, which is a metering system. Uh, they can't find enough of those people. They decide, hey, look, we've got great employees who are working in different areas of the company that they may have a passion, they may have a background in technology. Why don't we open this up and start an internal training program and teach Costco, existing Costco employees, how to program on the system? What a great way, right? You understand the company, you understand the business, you may have worked in the warehouse or in corporate, something like that. That's how I got into technology. That was in 1998 and I've been in it ever since. So that was an opportunity that was, uh, I, I took it, I ran with it, I found a passion for it, and all of the, my background, all this education. Yes, I'm not designing laser systems, it's true. I'm not involved in that like I had my formal education, but it all came into play. And that was one of the things I kind of want to just encourage you today is that you may be headed towards doing things with you know, SQL Server or integrating web applications with middleware and backend uh, programming or doing database queries or doing UI design. You might be doing modeling, architecture. Maybe you get into security, maybe you don't. Whatever you're targeting, whatever you're planning, it's not going to be for naught. You may not see it right away. You may not see where you're going to end up being. But I would just encourage you to, to just continue to do the thing that you're passionate about and hopefully you know, lead down the path that you want to go to. But there are so many opportunities these days, especially if you have a technical background and you can write. Now, let's say that you, you're not a very good writer. There is one person, the, the guy that hired me, um, he actually runs the, the gas stations at Costco. The, he ended up moving on to that. When they opened up Costco Gasoline, he was a director of that and ran, director of operations and ran all of the gas stations and open out and so forth. So he's been doing that since 99, I think, um, 97. Anyways, but what, what he did that helped me, he's one of a couple of people that I could easily call out where my writing is so much better today because of him. And it was, he's like, Rick, writing is one of those things that you just have to do it. You can read about it all you want to, but you're not going to improve to the level that you want to or need to until you actually do it. And you do it, and you do it, and you do it. Have somebody look at it. Have somebody mark it up for you. Have somebody give you feedback on how you can improve it. And so through emails and putting together documents and things like that, I learned, learn, learn. Plus, back here and here, I started having to do things like in Microsoft Word, a little bit Excel. But you know, back here there wasn't much. This is like, you know, early 80s time then. So I wrote my I wrote my uh, actually I wrote my master's thesis using uh, Microsoft Word 4 on an Apple. And I actually printed the thing out at one of the warehouses. Because <laughs> they had a color laser printer, right? So when I worked in the so I'm, I'm taking my little Mac disc. Uh, yeah. Because <laughs> Costco actually, they were selling the apples back then. This was a long time ago, right? And so I think this, this year is like 94. Yeah. 94 is when I got my now. Okay, so, um, so those are the kinds of things that, um, that, that's what got me into technology. So I started doing programming. I'm like, oh, I love it. I'm passionate about this. I'm, I'm finding this outlet, and I was good at it. And I had no idea. I was forced to learn basic computer, you know, 
what is it, begin, Beginner's All Symbolic Instruction Code. Back here, I had to go to the library, get a book on um, BASIC, so I could plot some program, some data that I was collecting, because I needed it for my senior thesis. Right, so that's the kind of thing, so education, learning, uh, it, none of it is for naught. So even when I was sitting there taking other kinds of classes, I thought, this is a waste of my time. Why am I taking all this geography? Well, it ends up coming into play later on in life because then I can actually talk intelligently, you know, as an, as an older adult. Like now I'm in a consulting type of role, which I never would have thought I was in. Now I go and help companies strengthen their security posture for the payment card industry. That's the card swipes, you know, your debit and credit card. Okay, so now I, but I have to be able to communicate with them. I'm also, I was also a member of Toastmasters. So I don't know if any of you belong to Toastmasters or have heard about it, but if that's something that's of interest to you, I'd encourage you, it'll help you facilitate your communication skills. Because those are the kind of the two big things um, that I'm seeing these days is, um, can you understand technology? Can you talk to the web app programmers? Can you talk to them about C Sharp? Can you talk to them about .NET? Can you talk to them about um, queries, things like that? But then can you also walk across the hallway and talk to the CFO about what the implications are of if this goes wrong? Right? Having both of those skill sets as he talked about um, makes you even that much more valuable uh, to an organization and can help you, you know, get the kind of career or lifestyle that, that you want to have. I mean, there's no guarantees, there's no silver bullets, but what I have found for me is uh, strengthening the soft skills, the communication, whether it's verbal, whether it's in writing, and being able to speak one-on-one -on -one in, in larger groups as well has helped me. Uh, never would have thought of it years and years ago. Nobody told me about that, but throughout over the years, that's just how things have kind of played out. And so I love, so I love community colleges. I love education. I love to learn, but then I also like to turn that around and, and help other people uh, in, in ways that uh, will benefit them. Also, yeah, um, with what you guys do. It seems even even in the classes on HTML5 and jQuery that we're taking, I'm finding that um, we're all kind of learning as we go. And so I'm assuming that with where you guys are at, you, you're, you're way up here and everybody else is trying to catch up. So how, from a community college standpoint, do you even get close to getting on par, um, but even understanding the terminology that you guys are starting to work with? I mean, you guys are basically on the cutting edge of the ads. So we, I don't know, you know we, we get that a lot. Uh, on things, and as someone who's, you know, I, mean, I, I interview probably for every hundred resumes I get, I'll probably interview about ten people, uh, and maybe we'll put out another one or two, right? And uh, so we've kind of refined that. We've kind of said, you know, what, what, what am I looking for as an employer? Right now? And right now, as well, oh, Rick, Rick says, you have to have a certain layer of technology, and specifically if you've got a certain compensation ranges. For people that are very open, um, it really has nothing to do with what, we, what we're looking at. Is I mean, you look at the how's the economic Rip of the physics factor. What I'm looking for, and you can kind of see what we what we kind of track. We look for one people that you enjoy working with. So you see this a lot of times. Where I mean, there's a lot of guys that are a lot smarter than me uh, that know how to do things, but companies don't want to hire them because they're not fun to work with, right? So one of the first things we look for is, you know, do I want to work with that person? Because I, you know, we're not a government job. I don't like working something we don't have to. So that's one one of the skill sets that we're looking for is. Surrounding ourselves with people again kind of goes back to similar interests. And so part of the thing that we're looking for is, you know, get, why are you? So you guys mentioned that you're doing all these things, but you didn't mention why. So why are you guys studying this? Last, you know what else? Okay. What, what other reasons? Well, why are you guys technically studying these courses? Uh, it's career change. It's, it's it's a career arc. We're getting into this stuff so you can move forward into the industry. So you can move forward into getting involved with people that have similar interests and actually being able to do some. Fun stuff and feel fulfilled. Okay. Any other any other thoughts on why you guys are taking things? Um, <clears throat> I've been studying web apps uh, because I like to empower uh, folks, uh, business owners, individuals, community group uh, presidents to um, 
utilize all the technology that's coming together uh, so that they can uh, further their cause, right. whatever that may be, you know, to make a profit, to, to serve the community, uh, to get a job, you know, yeah. as an individual. Absolutely. So if you guys see my desktop, I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've got a black desktop, and i got one line at the bottom that I, I've had for a couple of years now. And I, I use that every day to kind of remind myself. And that line is, this is what you could have done. Right? So while I know I can go through something, I can get through to agree or do something, I'm always thinking about what what could I have done with my life, and, you know, why am I here? I'm not getting kind of too much into, you know, philosophical or religion. That is something that you know, where I find that when I'm looking with folks that want to get into our industry, um, it's not the most technical, not the guys we're looking for. We're looking for people that have a passion about something. And if you're passionate about it, it's going to show up in a lot of things you do. You can't be passionate about web application and probably, you know, not be involved in other areas that, you know, you, you'll need to start building a fundamental. So you may, you may hate SQL and back, but you know it's critical in order for you to build an application. Or you may be a .NET person, you need to learn Apache, you don't know anything about Apache, but you realize you have to do that. That shows really anything that you do, and so it's one of the interview questions I'm always asking, what are you most proud of? And what we're looking for is we're asking people that is we're, we're seeing the, the challenges and people taking things that they didn't want to do or they didn't think they were doing, um, getting those together and moving forward. And those are the guys, and one of the guys who's hired, Colin Schuler, he's 22 years old, and Rick and I were just talking about how awesome he is as a, as a hire. And uh, he, he isn't even an IT guy, really. He was, a, uh, one, he was an accounting major. Yeah, he, was account he, he, he recently graduated with his accounting degree. Yeah, so he recently graduated with his accounting degree. And his, his dad was uh, my commanding officer in the reserves. And so, again, this is kind of the networking, right? His dad called me and said, hey, Tom, my son just graduated. Not, I knew your company's hiring. I'm not sure if he's a fit. And I said, I, I looked at a bunch of things. Well, as an accounting major, it probably wouldn't be a good fit. But what attracted me to, to Colin was he was someone, when I asked him about kind of what he did, he re what really struck me was that, again, he was passionate to learn about things, where he wanted to go, and his vision of where he wanted to be two years from now, five years from now, was exactly what he did. And I can tell you right now what he's doing is he's helping us, um, like some of the things that I'm working with, I'm working with intelligence agencies on how they're stopping uh, you know, other countries from spying on us and torturing their drones from I'm working with folks like you know Oracle and Microsoft and VMware on their strategies around security because all those guys have created great applications and now security compliance is like the number one prohibitor from people moving to the cloud or if you get applications all is it secure it's going to be breached so all of a sudden this, you know this niche of security has become more than just something it's it's something that unless you can figure out how to do it it's really holding you back and that's what we're finding is you know we we go in places that have I remember the first time thinking about that I was going to security assessment with a bunch of, um, you know, at Oracle to Oracle database administrators, right? So just like you said, I mean, how, what value do I bring going to a company like Oracle interviewing database administrators and what they're doing? Well, the thing that they were lacking is they didn't understand kind of how everything worked together, right? So I could understand their little pieces. I don't know if you guys know, but these are some of the regulations and this is what these other guys are doing, and this is why you guys should change some of those things. So I guess kind of the short answer to your question, how do you get there, is, is just stay passionate about what you're doing. Um, keep on trying to broaden your your, your skill set on what you're doing, and you will naturally, I think, end up finding your, yourself into a position that you want. And it may, like Rick said, it may be something that you had no idea, you know, what you're going to, uh, or maybe something that you were at. My dad was a, an accountant and an auditor, and I remember thinking, I will never do that. That that sounds horrible. Uh, he had the little <laughs> green hats and would like balance things out, and uh, I never thought I'd do that, but now, you know, I do it. And I think the reason we do this is because we enjoy this because we actually help companies with their problems. We help large, complicated companies with big problems. And uh, and as part of that, you know, we're not in a unique position, I think, for the next three or six years where there's a lot of people that really need a lot of help. So you guys are in a good position because if you're looking into a career transition or, or, or wanting to move up or something, you guys are just in a fantastic spot right now where there's a huge need and the market is changing and you can accelerate your career, I think, more than any other, any other time. I wonder if you guys talk a little bit about the role of internships or getting some of that professional experience, um, whether it's a formal internship or just working, you know, volunteer for, for some <coughs> company to gain some experience and get some letters of reference. How important is that in your, in your hiring process or in your background? Uh, well, for me, me 
personally, I haven't worked with a lot of folks from an internship perspective. When uh, in some of the areas where I've been, it's hard from a security perspective to be an intern in some of that because it requires um, maybe additional background check or things that you know an investment that could be difficult to do or you know there was kind of a I don't want to say by policy but if you're if you're trying to investigate attacks that are coming into your website or across your network internships are kind of hard to get in that particular area there's other areas where you could could be um, be more successful in that but I guess it would kind of depend on the person's background and really kind of where, where things were headed with that yeah I think the, um, what I think is, is really to get the experience what I've done and I was actually thinking about so since you whiteboard something I feel like I have whiteboard something <laughs> so let me so let me say if you guys wanted to and I thought about this two years ago I wanted to create the leading cloud practice in the country for security and we were thinking with this guy that I had that other guy I hired some mic let's just build this. Let's build the, the, the group that leading cloud providers want to go and talk to in the end. That was our goal two years ago. How would you go about doing that? If you had a goal, you want to be, you know, develop the best website or the best, how, how would you guys do that? What are the, what thoughts would you guys have if that was a goal that you guys wanted to set out there? Okay, networking is one. See who's doing it already. See who's doing it. Talk to them. So, so that's what we did. So we looked at as cloud computer was going and we realized that nobody was doing it, right? We looked and we said, uh, I don't know if you guys have done this, but you know, so for kind of some basic MBA stuff, they look at, you kind of look at something and this might be, you know, things that you, you, you can do or your company can do. This is stuff that competitors can do, right? And these are kind of, uh, you know, collaborators. And so what a lot of folks are, are doing is they go and they find, you know, what are other competitors doing? What other partners are doing, and how do we go and get that part of the pie, right? So a lot of the, the fighting you see is going on here, but the, the value of what you really want to do is you you want to do this. You want to find a position in the in the market or in your career where you have something, you have people that know that you do that, and you have competitors that can't do what you do. And that's what we set out to do is we said, you know what, what do what do we have that other people don't have? And I said, well, I think one thing we have is we have this unique mix of military and commercial experience. So what we found is there's a lot of military contractors out there, Booz Allen, SAIC, all these other guys. They do a lot of military contracting, right? Then there's a lot of commercial guys, Microsoft, Amazon, uh, Oracle, they all do their own things. But there wasn't a lot of people that understood both. We found people spent 30 years in one or 30 years in another, and hey, you know, there's probably a good niche because you have this. The second thing is, you know, I'm not 50 years old. I can't compete against someone that's got 30 years of experience in something. So I said, what's the other niche where maybe not having 20 years of experience isn't as as critical? Where maybe kind of why, why would someone within our skill set really be the area you want to go to? And that we said, you know, cloud computing is great because you know it, it encompasses. You have to have a, a broad skill set of what you need to have, uh, and you need to be relevant with new technology. So a lot of people that have 30 years of experience are sick of learning. Right? <laughs> they don't want to relearn the newest gadget and that stuff. They're very, they're very happy. Some aren't. Um, and then the other part is just the energy, right? I said, all right, we will work harder than those guys to create something. So what we did is, you know, how, how I built. So I, I would say I have now the largest. The best, I definitely have the largest independent cloud computing consulting group right now. We're doing. Uh, we're one of four companies that were allowed to, to certify federal cloud through the federal government. Uh, I've got about a dozen customers. Everyone from. Savvis, Quest, Amazon, or not Amazon, but I know the folks in Amazon, I'm working with them. There's Microsoft, there's uh, other companies like Firehost and, and these other ones you have. So I've got about 20 different folks that I uh, I work with, and that happened all because in, basically happened in 2004, I heard about something called virtualization. I didn't know what it was, and so guess what I did? I heard, I want to learn more, more about it. I heard about this organization called CIS, the Center for Internet Security joined a mailing list and I just contributed some time to it. That, in 2004, I started working on this benchmark and if you look at it, you can, you can look at it. it's this ESXi, ESX benchmark that I was one of the contributing authors to. So you guys can see it. The good part is there's a lot of communities out there right now that if you're interested in doing something, you can just join. They're free to join and you end up surrounding yourself. What happened as part of that is I ended up meeting this guy called uh, Drew who ended up then working for VMware a little bit later. 
And as he left VMware, he called me up in 2008 and said, hey, Tom, you know, I understand we're doing some stuff. I see you're doing regulatory stuff. Can you help VMware write some white papers? So I helped write some white papers.